A lot of people think that prostitution is a choice. At Breaking Free, we find out more often than not that it's a lack of choices. We have people in other countries who are sold as children by their parents. Sometimes they are, they're bought and sold with the premise that they're gonna be educated, brought to America. But when they get to America, they have what's called an exit fee. And that's an enormous amount of money that they're never gonna be able to get. The average age of entry into prostitution is 13 years old. It's between 12 and 14, and that's worldwide. Now, we talk about in Minnesota where we turn from 8 to 10 tricks a day. In Asia, they turn about 40 tricks a day, and they take home about $50. Of course, they don't keep any of that. So this is happening all over the world, and the conditions are far worse in Asia, in the Eastern Bloc, in Africa, and all over. But the one thing I want you to Think about when you hear about human trafficking and sex trafficking, we all have a lot of sympathy for the little Asian girl that comes from Asia and she's caught in a sex ring and she's brought back to her country. But that same little girl, if she's born and raised in America, she's not always looked at as a victim when it's the same thing, whether it's domestic or international. By the way, 90% of the people that are prostituted or victimized in the United States are born and raised in the United States. And by far and large, most of the money that is spent on prostitution around the globe is from born and raised citizens of the United States. Sex trafficking isn't always limited to a single event. It's a continuum of exploitation. You could start with child sex abuse, with addiction, rape and sexual assault. Regardless of where the victim is in this continuum, she still is a victim. We had a girl that came into the office about two weeks ago. She was 17 years old. She came right off the mega bus from Chicago and Long story short, she told her case manager about an operation in Chicago where there was about six other girls from 12 to 15 in this room. They were either handcuffed by an arm or a leg to something stationary in this room. And guys were coming in and just paying the guy at the door to have sex with them. And they weren't even coherent. I mean, I don't even know that they had their eyes open. It didn't matter. There's a market for that. Your whole video life that BET world and all the videos and the music it's all plays a real big role especially with what's happening with young girls today and glorifying that word pimp you know pimp my ride uh, big pimp and all that stuff and glorifying the whole strippers all them stripper songs and young girls practicing the move and imitating and mimicking what they're seeing in these videos music just really plays a big part in that whole brainwashing especially for the youth during that brainwashing when you're young and you're getting pulled into the lifestyle, kind of programmed to think, oh, you're a star, baby. Look at how much money you made. What this is, is literally paid rape. So even though you're getting the money and you're doing the call or the act or whatever you want to call it, you have to smile like you like it. Vanita Carter, our executive director, is in Washington, D.C., meeting with Congresswoman Betty McCollum and Senator Al Franken. She's going to have a chance to talk to folks at the White House and the Senate and explain why non-government organizations should get private funding and public funding instead of having the government come up with an agency to do what we're doing. Why give it to an NGO? Well, I'll tell you why you give it to an NGO, because we've been there. We know what's up. We can talk about what's real and what's not. You know, we can talk about what these girls need. You need some beds, you need some cubicle areas, you need a shower, you need some food, that's what you need. You need someone there, an advocate to talk to. Maybe a list of resources. That's why you need an NGO. That's why you need someone like Breaking Free. What we try to do at Breaking Free is be a one-stop shop. We don't want our women to go all over the place because the bottom line is where we go, we're victimized. I was very brainwashed and breaking free has deprogrammed me. 